Hey guys, what's up? Xcoundrel here. I re-recorded the video that I uploaded today. I haven't done that in quite a while, but I wasn't happy with it. I put some bad information in there. Uh, in general, you know you guys know me. I like to be a perfectionist. I like to get it right. So this is a slightly tailored version and on my iPad as well, so the graphical quality is better. Hey guys, what's up? Xcoundrel here and I'm re-recording this video for the 17th time, this particular one, because people keep smoke grenading me and frag grenading me and making it very difficult to record this video. Tencent, if you're listening, and, and please, I do hope you are, please make a solo-only practice mode so I can stop having kids throw grenades at my feet and so I can record videos in peace, but also practice in peace. That'd be great. Thank you so much if you can do that. Brilliant. Let's move on. I'm re-uploading this video for a number of reasons. If any of you have followed my channel for a while, you know that if I get a piece of information incorrect, I hate it, and it, I want to go and redo it instantly. So that's what I'm doing. I'm redoing it instantly. I was incorrect a little bit about bullet drop um, on the previous video. So I'm going to illustrate bullet drop at the end of this video and talk about how to counteract it um, as a quick ending point to the improvement of your aim, especially at long distances using assault rifles. The other was because I used my phone to record. I got 1080 output, which means you didn't have to deal with that overlay on the left that says it's scoundrel and like and subscribe however the quality of the graphics on my phone is frankly awful compared to what i can get on my ipad so i thought i'd record it on my ipad at 1080 output with really good graphics so you guys can see a little bit better what i'm talking about so when it comes to aim there are a couple of factors that affect how you aim the first of which is whether you're using hip fire or down the sights fire you're always more accurate when aiming down sights, but it takes a little bit of time to get down sights. So if you are in a tense situation and you want to fire immediately, a lot of people like to fire from the hip, but you are distinctly less accurate when firing from the hip, so it is something to consider. The next of which is recoil. Recoil can be horizontal or vertical. Horizontal and vertical are two obviously separate forms of recoil, and I'll show you them both now. Let's have a look at vertical. As you can see, my bullet spread went from here to here upwards when I tapped on the fire button. If you notice, there was also a spray from left to right. That is horizontal recoil. And if I show you here, just controlling the vertical, there is a spray from left to right. And that is horizontal recoil. The other is bullet spread. Now, there is always going to be a natural deviation of your bullets, partly due to the recoil that you get from horizontal, but also partly just due, due to, over time, not every bullet is going to travel in a directly straight line, and due to wind and due to particles in the atmosphere, those bullets will deviate from their true course. So, to kind of discuss that and kind of look at it in, in, an, in another way, the further you shoot, the more impact spread and recoil is going to have. And it's all about the angle from you and the target. When I move my crosshair up and down by a very small margin, you can see that I'm practically covering the entire figure on that um, that 90 meter target over there. I think that's 90 meters anyway. So I'm covering a very large portion for a very small maneuver of the crosshair. If I do that same maneuver on my 10 meter target, I'm in the A zone the entire time. I'm always going to be hitting in this region. So you'll notice that obviously recoil, which mo moves your crosshair all over the place, is going to be more impactful at long range, but also the bullet spread is something that you're going to have to counteract. So obviously, at longer range, you're going to be less accurate unless you're using single fire and going for those single fire shots. So auto is almost certainly better at the short and medium ranges. And obviously, at the longer ranges, single fire is going to be significantly more accurate. And that's kind of touched on um, something that I wanted to talk about is that and a good way to counteract uh, recoil in general is just single tap fire. And this gentleman here is enjoying something similar, but t single tap fire is just a good way to counteract recoil if you're not confident in using auto. But obviously single tap fire is strictly inferior in terms of DPS output compared to when you're using automatic mode. So this guy's got a crossbow and he's just crossbowing my target, but that's fine. If you want to be really accurate with automatic fire at close range. Most of it is about controlling the recoil. So let's control the recoil of vertical. The very simple way to do that is to swipe down when you are firing. So I'm gonna show you that right now. You notice that previously when I sprayed my clip, I went up towards the 10 meter sign. This time I'm gonna to aim to keep it in this area here. Ah, yes, there is the, uh, there is the, the grenade guy. Thank you very much. He's gonna do it again. No, he's not. He's not. He's going to do someone else. Cool. Let's try and get on with it. Um, so I'm going to try and, keep, try and keep it to this area here, like I said. So let's just test that out. So you'll notice that about 
well, let's say like 70 to 80% of my bullets stayed in that area. We obviously had some horizontal recoil there, but it is all about just dragging down. Now, there are two ways that you can do this uh, and have success. You can either just burst fire and drag down just a little bit. You can see there I'm maintaining a fair bit of accuracy. Or if you want to spray your entire clip, you need to make sure you're constantly dragging down in your screen not like actively dragging down it's more of a subtle drag down so that you're almost like you're you're pivoting your finger so i'm pivoting my finger downwards you can see this i'm not actually taking my finger off the screen right now but what i am doing is getting up and down and that's just from pivoting my finger so that's what you really want to do especially when firing from the hip so i'm going to keep it all hopefully in that head area let's take a look at how i did yeah not bad like i kept it in the majority of the head area that would have been a dead dude from that clip Let's take a look at when I'm aiming down sights as well, as uh, I'm actually going to just move over to the 15 meter one for this one so I can illustrate it. Aiming down sights makes you more, more accurate in horizontal, but obviously the vertical recoil is still there to deal with. So, as you can see there, kept it all on the same sort of horizontal plane. Let's try the head here as well, but obviously I'm not going to be as accurate at, at 15 meters as I was at 10 meters because the target is much smaller, but... take a look here yeah i'd say i did i mean a lot of the bullet holes disappear after a while but i'd say i did fairly well so the main tip i can give you when controlling recoil with automatic weapons at close range is make sure you're just pivoting downwards and and, and sort of uh, dragging downwards on your screen to counteract the movement upwards of your weapon Let's take a look at the AKM, because I was using the M4 previously. The M4 has got a very large vertical recoil. Very, It kicks very hard, but the horizontal recoil is generally quite controlled. It's the opposite story for the AK. The horizontal recoil is not as huge, but the, sorry, the, the vertical recoil is not as huge, but the horizontal recoil is all over the place. So take a look there, like left, right, left, right, all the way over to the left. And it's a, it's a similar story when um, aiming down the sights as well. Let me just wait there, aim down the sights, and... So you notice that tighter, but still all the way over to the left at some point there. So controlling the AK is, is, an, is kind of a different feel. You still drag down slightly, but the way that you counteract horizontal recoil is if you see your gun moving to the side, you just drag down. If you see your gun moving to the side, you drag down. And actually, it's more of a diagonal drag than it is um, strictly left or right, because you're obviously always wanting to drag downwards. So you want to keep it so that you're directionally dragging um, downwards. Say that your gun is moving up to the top and right, you're going to want to diagonally drag down and left. Say that your gun is moving up to the top left, you want to diagonally drag down and right. So I'm going to show you that right here. And that was a pretty good AK spray. You saw it was all in that section. Let's do that on the head now. Once this guy's finished his clip. Oh, wait. He's firing a... Uh, an M20, uh, M249, so he's never going to figure it. But let's just do it here. And you can see I'm trying to control that horizontal recoil as best I can. I would say for an AK from the hip fire, that was a pretty darn good attempt. Let's do it with the, um, the down the sights now as well. A little, little bit wayside over there later on, but you see that we still kept it in the same kind of area. Let's aim down the sights now. And you can see that was uh, that was a nice spread on the head there. We kept it all in that A zone. So there are a couple of little things that I like to do when practicing my aim, and, and especially in the, the training mode. One of them is the letter coverage. I like to just tap and try and control my aim Oop. on the letters. You can see like that. Try and cover the letters with as many bullets as you can. Try and blot them out. Um, from the the particular the particular guy that you're looking at there, the other is I like to try and fill this box with bullets. The A, it's the optimum area to hit an, an opponent. So I try to fill that area with bullets, like that. And this is always going to help you aim a little bit better. But what else if I'm dealing with a longer range? Because obviously the spread is going to be much worse. Let's let's do it from hip at 25 meters. I'm controlling the vertical a little bit. But you can see it peppers much further across the board. And if I try with the AK. Now, you're never going to be as accurate as you are at 10 meters at 25 meters. But if you can keep it in the general body area, that's, a, that's a fantastic. If you're going to look down the sights, though, this is where the challenge begins. Trying to keep it in the head zone, looking down the sights. 
You can see I was a little bit all over the place there. That was not the most, uh, that was not my finest work. Let's try with the AK. Again, trying to control a horizontal recoil and a vertical recoil by dragging down and to the side. It's much harder to do, you can see. If you land 40 to 50% of your bullets, bullets at 25 meters, especially with iron sights, you're doing a pretty good job. So that's a really good way to practice your um, aim particularly. It's all about managing the vertical recoil especially, but also predicting the horizontal recoil. Ah, so the uh, training session ended. I also hate that. I hate that maybe almost as much as I hate people who shoot grenades at me. So we're going to quickly cover the long range bullet drop from assault rifles. So we're going to look down here. Let's take a look at 300 meters. So I'm going to aim towards the center of that 300 meter um, 300 meter sign there. Actually, maybe let's do 200 meters, 250 meters, because you might be able to see it a little bit better. So let's wait till this thing goes out the way. And wait a second. Do you notice that it landed just below where I shot? Let's try that at 300 meters. Oh, the bullet travel speed got me. It landed just below where I shot. I'm going to put my, my aim dead center on the middle of that 300. And it came just below. So bullet drop is where, as the bullet travels, it naturally loses vertical height just because of how far it's traveling. Imagine that you throw a paper plane. Eventually, over time, it's going to lose height, and that's the same thing that happens with bullets. But because they travel a lot faster than you could throw a paper plane, obviously they're going to travel further in that same verticality. Over time, though, you are going to see that the further you shoot, the more distance that you, or the more that the, the bullet drops off. You can see that you can see where the smoke comes out on that. It comes out about two dots below where I'm actually aiming. Now, obviously, the way to counteract that is to aim just a little bit higher. So I'm going to put the dot below, or actually, let's put it halfway between the red and the uh, the the small black dot below this eight times. Ah, that was pretty good. That was almost right in the middle. And again, you can see, bang. Let's try once more. Oh, that's hit that guy in the head. There you go. You can see it's kind of getting in the area that we want it to be in. You can't really see because it's just one bullet hole, but you can see that it is going towards the center of that thing. So I can, I can say that training with the M4 at 300 meters, I know that if I want to hit someone exactly where I'm aiming, I need to aim between the red dot and the black dot below it. And that is the aim at 300 meters for the M4. And you can try this with all of the weapons, but that is the bullet drop that you get. There's also travel speed, and travel speed is where obviously the bullet takes its time to reach its destination. So I am going to fire just as this turns up. And you see just a little bit before it got to me. I'm going to do it at the uh, the very long range one as well over there. You can wait, wait for it, wait for it. And there. So it didn't quite, it wasn't quite on the center. And I'm going to show you that again. It wasn't quite on the center, but as it was moving, the bullet travel speed obviously takes a little bit of time to get to its destination. So I pull the trigger and about, I don't know, like a quarter of a second later, it actually hits its target. That was a little bit off. So you always need to, especially with moving targets, you always need to aim just in front as well to compensate for both bullet travel speed and the speed at which your uh, target is moving. Right, that's everything that I have to offer from this video. So thank you very much for watching if you did and uh, I will see you soon. Yeah, just like I said in that video, section uh thank you very much for watching if you did it's all i have uh, to say on assault rifle aiming specifically i'm going to do one on sniper rifles soon i'm um, sorry for the re-upload again I, I really dislike bad videos on my part and that one wasn't good so i wanted to make sure i did it right and do right by you guys because if i upload a bad video to my channel that's a bad video that you have to watch so thank you so much for continuing to support me i love you all see you soon